I'm in a tough spot, guys. I'm, I'm in a bit of a bind, right? The hottest topic is the heavyweight class, and the heavyweight class, which is the perennial class of all combat sports. Doesn't matter if you want to talk about Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson or one of the Klitschko nerds or Tyson Fury. Like, it, it's the heavyweight class, right? You can work in Smoke and Joe and George Foreman, but it's the heavyweight class. We understand those things. Doesn't matter if you're talking about The Rock or Austin or Hogan. You're talking about the heavyweight class. And it hasn't been a featured division. It has been a colossal group of guys who have dropped that ball. So when I tell you I'm in a very hard spot, I cannot use negative words about Stipe. I would feel that's blasphemy. As an athlete and as a human being, for me, Stipe is just top notch. There was a comment made by Tom Aspinall that he is accepting the fight of Pavlich, but doing that while under the guise that Stipe's only interest is in fighting John Jones, and that when the fight with John Jones and Stipe happens, that's a retirement fight. Now, you've got to understand, I'm not reporting that to you. I'm not telling you that. I don't know that to be true. But I do know it is the only thing that's ever been said on that. And there's a rule in politics, which is the person says something that's not right about you, you correct it, and nobody's corrected it. So we're left as fans to operate with the information that we've been given. And that's the only information we've been given, not to mention everything does align and point to the direction where you would see where that's reasonable and believable, even if I have to come short of having confirmation. Now, if we go back one week, and we go to the Pat McAfee show that had Dana White on there. And Dana White grabbed his phone and he read a text message that came in from Islam as it pertained to Islam going to fight Volkanovsky. Islam had laid out to Dana what it means to be world champion. And Khabib had also shared in a subsequent interview what the thought process was for agreeing to take on an opponent as dangerous and as skilled as Volk on set short notice. And the text that Islam set Dana and the words that Khabib said makes me think perhaps Islam was hitting the heavy bag and Khabib took his phone and said, but I mean, they like shared a brain. It was the same concept, which is it doesn't matter who it is or when it is or where it is. If it's under these rules and that person can tip the scale at 155, they are eligible to come in and take what it is I have, which is a belt signifying that I'm the best at this on earth. If I'm not, I don't even want it. I want to deserve to have it. I don't even want it. That person should have it. It's a very honorable thing. It was tremendously honorable. It was tremendously accurate. I've never been around somebody that doesn't have that mindset. But I also came up through the amateur ranks, where that is the mindset, period. And it changes when you get to the pros. The pros are looked at above the amateurs. But the truth is, the amateurs are the purists. The amateurs are the one that compete with an architecture where you actually can find out who is first, who is second, and who is third on earth. So when you're put in a position to find out that your number one contender isn't willing to prove his spot, it puts you in a hard position. Puts you in a really hard position. The number one contender isn't willing to prove his spot. And then you have a champion who apparently must at least give you something along that theme and that vibe. That, hey, this is my next guy. And you wonder why. You wonder, why would that be? Because John Jones has not been picky in the past. You could go as far as to say he's been difficult to work with, but you couldn't go as far as you need to to get to where you would call him picky. John did get everybody a shot. That's true. You got you to give him that. Very hard schedule, very hard resume. Whether it was resistance and dancing done in the background or not, eventually, come hook or crook, John did get in there with him. You got to give John that. But you would start to understand where there would be a resistance for the first time ever if 
In fact, it is a retirement fight for both of them. Now, for the umpteenth time, I'm not confirming that that's accurate. But if I was to talk to you guys under the assumption that that is true, if John and Stipe are partners and they're not going to do anything without the other, and their next fight is going to be each other and it is a retirement fight, that's a very important detail because if that is true, then whoever wins between Tom and Sergi will, without question, eventually become the undisputed champion. They will be elevated into that status. Whoever's the interim champion, when Jones and Stipe get done, have an announcement by Bruce and ride into the sunset. That would be the shortest reign a champion has ever had. If Bruce Buffer announced and your champion is, and that starts the clock, and a microphone then gets put in that person's face by Joe Rogan, and they announce retirement. The clock that you started when Bruce said it has to stop when the athlete says it. You could have a heavyweight champion of the world for one minute. At which point, that belt instantly becomes a trophy. It inst Snap of the fingers becomes a keepsake. And Sergi and or Tom, without throwing a punch or rendering a decision of any kind, goes from interim champion to undisputed champion. That is almost as weird as the night they woke up Matt Hughes and told him he was the world champion. That's almost as weird as Ronda Rousey and Jose Aldo having never competed within the octagon and both being the UFC champion. We had two champions in Ronda Rousey and Jose Aldo who in theory could have gone in and competed and lost, have it never, and they're retired. They could have never won a UFC fight and been the UFC champion. And it's just one of those interesting positions where if the information is accurate, that Jones and Stipe have found each other, and this is between them, right? Your legacy is between you. How you want to be remembered and those types of things, that's between you. That's how you feel. There, there is no actual such thing. You could be recognized and you could be elevated. You could be put into the Hall of Fame. You could be recognized for things that you had done in your past, but your legacy is about how people will remember you. There's nothing that you can do about that. Nothing. You could be undefeated and people say that you ducked and dodged and pulled out. And there's nothing that you can do about that. So if this is intrinsic and this is between them, and I would fully understand that, right? I grew up as a wrestler. I know all about intrinsic value. I don't look down on that, but I'm sharing for you. If that information is true, so the winner of Tom and Sergi, for sure and without question, is never going to get to face the undisputed champion, but will in fact become the undisputed champion via proxy and only upon the waiting of a process that is nothing more in relation to them than a date. A date must come and go, and then I become champion. Not an effort that I have to do. Why wait? Why can't Jones and Stipe just fight someday? Why can't they just be the main event? Why can't they go settle it? Why would it be for an undisputed championship? Why would it be for a championship of any kind? It's not as though that's going to hurt the business of that fight. This fight was announced many months ago, and you can still go online and buy tickets today, right? I mean, they didn't move the needle when it was all of these different things. What difference will it make if we're going to wait a year and do it, whether we throw a belt out there or not? What difference will it make? It wasn't a sought after fight. It's apparently between them. They have something that is legacy that's within their minds. They can still go do that and resolve it. Scott Ferrosa and Tank Abbott went and fought in the backyard. Like, there's ways that you can do and heal and fix those things that are intrinsic to you anyway. If that is a retirement fight and it's each other or bust, I'm not willing to prove that I'm the best in the world. I'm not willing to prove that I'm the second best thing that's making me number one contender. Okay, great. But now you go into a different category, Tom and Sergey. You're fighting for the true 
championship. 